Do you want to learn about one of the best techniques for finding the root cause of the problem you may encounter at work or even in a day-to-day -day life? Unfortunately, we won't be able to cure your alcohol addiction in this one, but I still promise you're gonna learn a lot in this video, so stick around. Whether we are aware of it or not, our life is simply a bunch of problems we try to solve every day, which obviously applies to our jobs as well, especially in the tech industry. Like for example, when you're debugging the software you literally wrote a day ago. We go to work to solve a particular problem which ultimately brings profit to the company we work for or to our own business. But sometimes things don't go as expected and break, or you simply don't have enough domain knowledge of the problem. Or there are a bunch of people involved in it and it's simply too complex to be able to find the cause of the problem so easily. Well, Firewise Technique to the Rescue Firewise Technique is one of the most useful tools for an in-depth root cause analysis. The technique was originally developed by a Japanese guy called Sakishi Toyoda, the founder of Toyota back in the days, in order to find the root cause of the failures that were happening in the production line. He realized that problems that have been resolved have been simply patched and soon they were coming up again. At this point he got to the understanding that they were simply fixing the tip of the iceberg and the root cause of the problems was somewhere deep down in the production process. This is where he formulated the 5 wise technique. By the way, really quick before we jump into an example, just wanted to say if you like this kind of content, please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. So in the simplest explanation, 5 wise is basically a process of asking why 5 times until you get to the root of the problem. I'm gonna draw you a simple scenario that we might have for example in software development teams. Imagine Gus. Gus works as a web developer at a startup. His team recently implemented the new automated client invoicing system that has been working pretty well for some time already. But one beautiful morning the team receives complaints that some invoices haven't been sent out. Hmm, now how can we make sure that we fix the issue? and prevent it from happening again. Well, we could just go and manually send the unsent invoices and hope it never happens again. It definitely will happen again, since we haven't fixed the root issue of the defect yet. So what do we do is we ask, why weren't some invoices sent? And the answer we might get is, because there was a bug in the latest release. Okay, so we keep on asking again, why was there a bug in the latest release? Then one of the QA engineers in the team replies, because we didn't test one of the new features in the latest release. Okay, um, why didn't we test one of the new features? Another team member steps up and says, because this feature request came into the sprint with a high priority close to the end of the sprint and we were too busy finishing the test suits for other cases. Well, and why did this feature request come into the sprint with such a high priority? Because this feature has been requested for a long time already and we never got to put it into the sprint until it became so urgent. I want you to pause and think about the answer for a second. In theory, this answer could have been taken as a root cause, but no, um, it's a false trap alarm. As long as we're able to ask another why question to that answer, we keep on digging deeper and deeper. So we ask, why have we been postponing it for such a long time then? Well, it kind of got lost in a product backlog. At this point, it feels like this might be it a badly prioritized backlog by a product owner. And there's no need to keep on asking the responsible person, at least at this point of time. Did you see how the problem unfolded different layers like an onion? The root cause of the initial problem was something completely different from most of the expectations. We literally came from, hey, the invoices are not sent, we have a bug, to our product backlog hasn't been prioritized properly for a long time. Implementing 5 wise technique is straightforward at first glance, and it is. In order to make the best out of it, however, you need to keep in mind the following points. 5 is just a number. 5 doesn't mean you need to ask 5 why questions, it's merely an arbitrary number which can vary depending on the problem size. Sometimes you can find the root cause in 3 whys, sometimes you will need more than 5. The next one is short, to find a clear problem. It's very easy to define an unnecessarily wide scope of the problem with never-ending why questions. Therefore, try to define the main problem with the team and try to make a clear problem statement. The next one is form a team. In order to receive the most possibly comprehensive answer to your why questions, 
you need to make sure you have a cross-functional team consisting of members from different departments that are the closest to the issue that is going to be investigated. This can be developers, QA engineers, designers, doesn't matter, basically any other employee that is directly related to the issue, which will eventually help you have different mindsets with different perspectives on the problem and collect enough information to make an informed decision. And last but not least, the team should consist of people who can take actions towards the solution of the identified problem. Assign a facilitator. Choose a person who will act as a moderator and who will simplify the whole process by asking questions in order to keep the team focused. Usually in agile teams, this person is the scrum master. Another job of the facilitator is to make sure the answers are based on facts rather than emotions, which will obviously be present throughout the whole process. It's also important to make sure you don't ask too many why questions because this can lead to unnecessary suggestions and complaints which will again be based on the emotions. Also, sometimes there can be more than just one root cause of the problem. In this case, the analysis will look more like a matrix with different branches. And the last one, blame processes, not people. As you try FireWise technique, you will start noticing some similarities and the patterns in the way you come to the root cause of the problem, especially in the tech teams. And you will be surprised that usually it boils down to either a managerial or a process issue such as lack of communication, failed process execution, bad optimization, bad prioritization, which was the case with our example. So usually it's not the person to blame, but the lacking set of rules to ensure stability. You will also feel the resistance from some of the participants who are directly responsible for the area that is being targeted in this uh, process at the time. So make sure they don't feel uncomfortable or threatened by this fact. Just try to explain the reason behind five whys and don't make it feel like an interrogation to them. And make sure that they should have an open mind and that we're not focusing on individual mistakes or individuals at all. So as a summary, I'm sure you would agree that this technique is quite simple and easy to implement. So definitely bring it to your team and try it out on any of the issues you may encounter during the sprint, after the release or after the retrospective. And of course, after this, come back to this video, leave a comment and tell me about your experience. I hope you learned something new today and if you did, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe because I'll be releasing new videos every second week or basically as soon as I can so that you don't miss them out. Cheers!